Yeah, definitely I've had not. this question in my head for a little while now, and I want to ask a real comedian. So there are a couple comedians, stand-up comedians, who do more than one thing. They're stand-up comedians and they're writers. They're stand-up comedians and they're UFC commentators. Guess, right? They're, they're but like you know, they're they're known for more than one. Uh, as successful actors and actresses who also do stand-up comedy. Yet it seems like the stand-up comedy part of their career is the most central to their core of sense of self-worth and accomplishment. What is it about that? Because they're might be more successful in other like or maybe more well known for other parts of their career but it's the stand up comedy that is their like self ranking what well what why a couple things i would think one it's how we all started right and so that's what we said going on stand up stand up comedy but you know the stand up com uh, comic community is just a community of broken toys and so that identification as a comic is like a badge of honor. And it's not only that, because I would tell you right now, out of all of the arts and, you know, different things that people do, I think stand-up's the hardest. And so I think people wear that also with a little bit of a badge of honor. Like, yeah, you all are, but you don't do, you couldn't do what I do. And so I think part of it is that, and if I would be completely honest, I think most people enjoy it the most. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, I bet you, I bet you even, I wonder if even Sandler, if you asked him, what are you, you an actor, you stand up. He, I don't know, but you know, I, Tiffany Haddish would tell you she was a stand up, and mm -hmm. she's definitely been more successful. I think as an actress and as a stand up, although she won it, emmy or a grammy or one of the other something like that but like i think it's your identity it's part of you who am i and for mm -hmm. me it's a badge of honor to say i do this job because i know what it takes to do this fucking job mm -hmm. and i know what it's taken to get here and there's no shortcuts in this job you have to eat shit for a certain amount of time to really be like how badly you want this how badly do you, feel you like want it's this? like kind because of like for a while like everybody you're gonna be terrible yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody went through the same kind of frat hazing of getting ripped on, being shitty. And so even if, you know, you're a mid guy and you're talking to some big guy or you're the big guy talking to a mid guy, you still have that commonality. You'll find comics who have never met end up gravitating towards each other if they're in a room and will end up talking. I don't know you, but I know you. Mm -hmm. So I know everything you've had to go through. I know you ate chicken fingers for five years. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. I know what it takes, the, the beating on your ego and your self-worth of just like night after night of strangers staring you in the face. What was the closest you ever came, if there ever was a time, probably in the beginning of your career as a stand-up, where you were like, this sucks, I don't feel like I'm progressing fast enough, maybe this isn't for me? You know, that's a great question, man. It's something I just admitted, I think, for the first time probably two weeks ago. Um, you know, I almost quit and quit's not the right word. I almost had to stop after Chelsea hand the show after Chelsea lately, I made the choice to actively try to shed those fans. Great. By the way, great people, great fans, nothing against them, but they weren't my fans. Mm -hmm. They were her fans and they were eventually going to fall off like mm -hmm. they did for all of us. And then you know, it's that you got to pull off the bandaid because I need to build it back up. And if I wait seven years or however long it takes for them to all go away, it may be too late by then, you know? So mm. I hit a point in 2000. I don't know what year I put my special out father of the year. I think it probably came out in 2017. So there was a point in 2017 where I said to my wife, <clears throat> I'm better than I've ever been, but I'm going to have to find a new job. They're just not paying me anymore. Mm hmm. And I, I, I'm just, I don't want to, I don't want to start over at the pay scale. I don't want to start here again. I did that. I know what that's like, but you know what? I feel really good about myself right now. I don't know if my ego can handle this. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Taylor, it was never the sucking. The, I think growing up with three older brothers and having kids real young really put a lot of things in perspective. Mm-hmm like 
if you don't have my last name, you can't hurt my feelings. Nothing you can say. There's no, you know what I mean? I don't fucking know you. And yeah. so I always, my biggest bomb, I bombed the fifth time, fourth time I was ever on stage. I opened up for a guy named Sam Kinison. Oh, very cool. <laughs> and it was a, a pure mistake. I had won a comedy competition because I had, excuse me, packed the bar with my friends and it was, a you know, mm. whoever got the most applause, right? Yeah. Sam's opener's dad, a guy named Carl LeBeau, his dad, I believe, I forget what he died of. I don't want to, sp- I don't want to guess, but he had passed away when they were on their way to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. So Sam's brother was like, Hey, we hear this comedy competition who won. And they were like this kid, Josh Wolf. And he was like, Hey, will you open it for Sam? Or it might've been the guy who was promoting in the area, whatever, whoever it was. Mm-hmm. So I get this phone call. You want to open it for Sam Kinison? Fifth time I was ever on stage. And I was like, this comedy shit's easy. Yeah. I'll open it. <laughs> I'm already. <at> Yo, the top. <laughs> I bombed. To, to first of all, I told you what I was wearing. For those of you who don't know Kinison, Kinison was the first rock and roll comic. He wasn't playing at a comedy club. He was playing at a rock club. Nobody did that. Stanhope does that now, but nobody did that. Mm-hmm. There were no seats. People were standing up. And he, you know, he used to play music at the end of his shows. He was a huge rock guy, you know? And so I didn't, I was a little confused with my styles. I was wearing some wingtip black shoes, um, some Good. acid wash jeans with one of those thin black belts that has the silver tip on it. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I had a blue blockbuster, basically shirt, button down shirt tucked into those jeans. I was wearing a black leather motorcycle jacket and I had a ponytail with some bangs. It wasn't a good look. Doesn't sound like it. A and I walked out on stage bangs. and before I even got to the mic, somebody just screamed, you better be funny, Bobby Brady. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Fifth time on stage, I'm not ready to be heckled and I'm not ready for Kinison's crowd. This is how bad it went. So first of all, by the way, when the guy said to me, hey, I go, yeah. And he goes, because I, I did your fifth time on stage, I had maybe three minutes of material. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, Hey, keep it to a tight 20. I was like, what? (laughs) A tight 20. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought I was doing my three minutes that I did at the bar. He was like, keep it to a tight 20. They were so tired of me being good. Let me tell you, you just so afraid when they said that, Yo, they were so tired of me being there guys. They stopped heckling me three minutes into the act and just started talking to each other. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. Worse. you weren't and even not only that, that I only had three minutes of material. So I you just hit him with the best stuff like already. <laughs> you know, the only laugh you probably could have gotten that night is after your three minutes of good stuff. And they've already, already started talking amongst them. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's all downhill from here, guys. That was yeah. material. <laughs> that's all the material I actually had. <laughs> Kyle, I would have said it if anyone was listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I said it. There was, the, I mean, the, the guy sweeping up behind me, he chuckled. <laughs> <laughs> the last five I minutes of the laugh. set was just me talking to my girlfriend in the mic, going like this. They're not listening to me. She was like, well, just keep going. And I was like, yeah, but nobody, they don't care. She was like, I'm listening. <laughs> I was having a con- a one-on-one <laughs> conversation. How many people are in the crowd? I don't know how many people. Rock and roll club. You know, I don't I don't remember. Hundred. I would bet it feels like eight hundred. Feels like standing up. Maybe a thousand. Jesus Christ. Like- <laughs> so then I get off stage. Sam crushes. And his manager's like, hey. So for the second show, and I was like, second show? Oh no. Can I and go home? Said, Sam's been known to get a little fucked up in between shows, so I might need you to go a little longer. <laughs> oh, now it all comes together, huh? And I was like, wait, you understand what's happening now? Well, I, I go, I go, what? I go, didn't you watch the first show? And he goes, yeah, 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 you were oh, doing yeah. great. And I was like, oh, I'm like, so he goes, if I do this, you just get stretch. And I was like, <laughs> You want, do you want me to do my set for the sixth time? Is that what you want me to do? Yeah, I did because it was 25 minutes. I had to do the second show. Mm-hmm. I did my set five times. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> just over and over and over. I just did it over and over again because they weren't listening. And, and more people were walking in. You know, it was slowly filling up. So I was like, well, you didn't hear minutes, them. Let me tell you my jokes. You didn't hear them. And I just <laughs> repeated my jokes again. Oh, hang on. He that. just walked in. All right, we're, we're gonna start over. Everybody, cool. We're starting over, right? But, that's but Taylor, let me t- and you yeah. guys to 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 your point. When I was driving away, my girlfriend at the time said to me, "Well, you got that out of your system." 
Oh. You'll never have to do that again. Oh. Meaning if you quit now, nobody will blame you. And I mm -hmm. told her straight up, oh, I'm not going out like that. Like, I may not do stand up for a living, but those motherfuckers aren't getting the last laugh on me. Well, they didn't I laugh guarantee it. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> that, that's not how it went down. You're not even getting the first laugh on me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I was just like, that's not how I'm ending this story. This is not the end of this fucking story. And so failure was not the thing that was going to make me quit this. Yeah. That was that's not really brave. That's really brave. Mm -hmm. Now you you are aware that they wanted you up there because you were awesome to to like follow, right? Oh no 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 no! Sam wasn't that dude because Carl LeBeau was one of the funniest humans. The people that Sam used to tour with, Kyle, okay, they were called the Outlaws of Comedy. Yeah. Jimmy Schubert, Carl LeBeau, one other dude, murderers. Carl LeBeau. We're talking about Kennison. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a big Carl, fan. Yeah, Carl LeBeau. We, and he recently passed away, but I'll tell you right now, Carl LeBeau to me is the single most underrated comic in the history of comedy. This dude was dark and real and raw and fucking, but he wasn't that great to look at. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he just wasn't that dynamic, but what a fucking great comics comic. He was one of these dudes that when he went on stage at the comedy store, the comics were coming in to, coming in to watch. Mm -hmm. Funny. And Jimmy Schubert, I don't know if you guys know who Jimmy is. No. Oh, dude. He's still doing it. Jimmy's pff, Jimmy's ridiculously funny. So Kinnison was not a dude who was scared to have funny people go up in front of him. Uh, he probably was used to people getting laughs. Not me.